Welcome to the Irresistible You podcast. This is the place to get a dose of empowerment to create the life you crave and deserve. I'm your host, Amy Beltran, CEO and founder of Irresistible University. Through my signature online coaching program, I teach women just like you how to ditch the body image issues, gain confidence, and lose the emotional weight to look and feel irresistible at any size. If you would like to learn more about my coaching program and see if you're a good fit for enrollment, please schedule a free confidence clarity call at irresistibleicing.com slash call. Let's get on to the episode. Hello, everyone. It is so good to be recording. It is so good to um, be back, so to speak. I um, This is my first episode that I am recording postpartum. I had my son uh, two weeks ago, almost three weeks ago now, which is insane. And um, I'm on, I'm going to use air quotes here, maternity leave, because there's really no such thing as true maternity leave when you work for yourself and run your own business. <laughs> so it's very different this time around, um, where when I had my daughter, I was still working as a director of education and doing my my side hustle on the side. So a little bit different, but it's okay. We're, we're in the groove. We're figuring out things. Um learning our new dynamic as a family of five, including Chewy. <laughs> and um, it's been great. Our son is amazing and beautiful and healthy and just feeling so blessed to have him in our life. And, you know, for those of you that do follow me on social media, especially Instagram, and if you don't, I am at Irresistible Icing. I had been sharing a lot of behind the scenes things around the delivery and how I was doing. And I also had shared on there, um, I had quite a few postpartum complications. And I am planning on doing a full episode around what happened to me and what I have been through because while our son was healthy and perfect and I was actually doing quite okay um, in the hospital. Once I got home, things took a turn for the worst. And um, it was really scary. And um, I'm just happy to be here. I just need to say that. And I'm not saying this to be dramatic or, you know, over the top. But I am feeling very grateful and blessed to be alive and to be able to work and to be back and to be talking with you all because it was a very scary time. And so I had multiple things happen and I am still in a place where um, I'm trying to pull my thoughts together so that I can share my story in a very cohesive, coherent way Um, because when it first happened, it was very hard to talk about. But because of the work that I do and the platform that I have and the power that I know sharing your story has, I feel compelled to share what happened to me because I believe that by doing that, it could save someone's life. And I am going to be doing that. I don't know if it's going to be next week. I don't know if it's going to be next month, but I am going to be putting that together very soon so that I can share with you Um, kind of my journey and what happened and how I got here. So I'm doing amazing. I'm feeling so good. If you can tell, I don't sound, I hope I don't sound like I'm winded and running a marathon anymore (laughs) now that the baby's out. Um, But I'm feeling so much better. I'm on the road to recovery. I am doing great. And I am just embracing life. And, you know, everything that happened to me last week um, after the baby was born you know, I living an irresistible life and being irresistible you and what that means to me is embracing the life that you have and living in the moment and being mindful and present and all of the things. But this was just another huge reminder to me of how important that really is and that we cannot afford to sit around and hide and isolate and play it small because we don't like the body that we're in. Life is fragile. (laughs) Things could happen at any moment and 
I know there was a time in my life where um, knowing that life was fragile and knowing that things could change in a heartbeat made me actually scared of living life. And that was when I went through one of my darkest depressions and I developed agoraphobia. And every time I would even open the door to leave the house, I would have panic attacks. And, you know, as I got through that and got older and did my work and did therapy and created the Irresistible You framework and, you know, stopped attaching all of my worth to losing weight and a number on the scale and all of those different things, I do live my life in that way where, I understand life is fragile and I understand that life is can change in a heartbeat, good or bad. And that just empowers me to live to the best of my ability every single day. And with everything that happened to me last week, um, it was just another like big, big, like slap in the face reminder that you know, you're here for a reason and you still have a lot of things to accomplish and you have a lot of life to live and you had a lot, you have a lot of lives to change and I'm not going out that easy (laughs) y'all. So I'm here and I want to just, this was kind of an impromptu episode because I just see so many people in the community that are miserable that are not taking action, that are not living the life they really deserve to be living. And, you know, circumstances happen, you know, we all have circumstances, we all have things that aren't that great that happen to us. But we have to remember that we are also empowered on how we respond to things and how we how we move forward with things. And so, you know, when I see so many of you complaining how you want to lose 20 pounds or, oh, you know, I just keep overeating when I'm not hungry and all these different things and thinking that that is the biggest problem in your life, it might feel that way. Your reality might feel like overeating and being overweight is the biggest problem you have in your life. But I want to challenge you on that because in most cases, when you're an emotional eater, and if you're listening to this podcast, you're an emotional eater, okay? Um, And let me just say something real quick about emotional eating because I've had people say to me, Amy, I'm not an emotional eater. I just really love food. Or Amy, I'm not an emotional eater. I just like to eat when I'm happy. Okay, come on, y'all. Newsflash, okay? Love? And happiness are also emotions. <laughs> Emotional eating is not just doom and gloom, negative, you know, down in the dirt emotions. Emotions are the whole spectrum. So if you eat because you love food, then that's an emotion, right? So food and the weight feels like it's your biggest problem. And I recognize that and I validate that for you because it used to feel that way for me as well. But I want to challenge you to think about the fact that your weight, your excess weight and your relationship with food is the symptom of something else. It's the symptom of you not liking yourself. It's a symptom of you not having enough love and respect for yourself. That's what it's about. And so when people come to me and they're like, well, what kind of food rules do you teach? And and how much weight am I going to lose? It's like, listen, here's the deal, guys. My program, Irresistible You, my coaching program, it's not a diet. It is not a weight loss program. And if you are looking for a straight up diet or a straight up weight loss program, I'm not your girl. And I'm going to tell you that straight up. If all you want to do is lose 20 pounds for the sake of losing 20 pounds or losing 50 pounds because you need to fit into a dress for a wedding, please don't work with me. Please do not contact me to work with me because that is not what I'm about. Because if that's what you're looking for, I'm going to tell you this right here, right now, you're selling yourself short. Losing 20 pounds, losing 50 pounds just to say you're losing the 50 pounds 
That is not going to change your life. That is not going to take away your anxiety. That is not going to stop your panic attacks. That is not going to create a better relationship with your spouse. That is not going to give you the job that you want for yourself. So if that's all you're looking for, I'm not a good fit for you. And I want to be very clear about that. Because what I offer and how I help my clients is so much bigger than 20 fucking pounds. Because I am here to help you change and transform your life. To change the way you think and feel about yourself. To change the relationship or to create a relationship with yourself. There is no diet. There is no meal plan. There is no keto bullshit on Pinterest that is going to teach you how to do those things. I promise you that. And I can confidently promise you that because I spent a lifetime chasing the same shit. Getting all excited, printing out recipes, pinning all the things on Pinterest, going, oh my God, yes, this is going to be the diet. I can do this. This is going to be easy. And then it never works because it's not intended to be this program that you can live your life by. And trying to change your life by eating some keto bullshit is never going to change your life. It might change the size in your pants until you eat carbs again. It might change the number on the scale until you have a catastrophe or a trauma that you have to deal with and you don't know what else to do to cope with your life because you're just relying on fad diets. You haven't learned how to deal with your emotions. You haven't learned how to deal with your entitled bullshit that you do with yourself. You haven't learned how to shut down the inner fat bitch that tells you you're a worthless piece of shit. What diet out there is teaching you how to do those things? None of them. None of them. You know, and so it's just, it's frustrating as a coach because I know what's possible for you. Because I've been in your shoes and I've done the work and I've gotten to the other side and I've, I've helped bring clients across that same bridge and I know what's possible for you. And, you know, as I sit here postpartum, you know, obviously, um, and I, I did a lot of episodes and YouTube videos around um, a plus size pregnancy and what it was like for me this time around. Obviously, I've gained weight. Obviously, I gained weight. I gained about 60 pounds with this pregnancy. I gained 70 with my first. And I'm about 20, 20 to 25 pounds, almost 30. Like I think like 25 to 30 pounds down already. That's how much fluid, you guys. Like um, When I share my bigger story, I'm going to go into this more. But I literally had about 25 pounds of pure fluid in my organs and my body. So right now, you know, I've still got a lot to lose to get back to my pre-pregnancy weight. But let me say something about that. This is probably even more so than with my daughter. This is like the first time I am just so not pressed about the weight loss. I am not pressed. I am not stressed. Do I want the weight to come off? Absolutely. Will I get all the weight off? Absolutely. Do I care the timeline or time frame in which it comes off? No, I don't. Because, well, number one, I've done the foundational work to know that I'm not a worthless piece of shit because I'm overweight right now, okay? I've done the work to know I am worth more than the number on the scale right now. I have done the work to know I'm the same person at my post-pregnancy weight that I am, you know, right before I got pregnant, okay? So I don't have that inner fat bitch stuff going on telling me how worthless I am and how disgusting I am and how I better just stay home and hide and not enjoy time with my kids outside the house, okay? Does it mean that that doesn't pop up for me sometimes? Of course it pops up sometimes. But I also know when that inner fat bitch pops up, I know how to shut the bitch down because I don't have room or time for her in my life. And I know how to redirect the shit she tells me and how to move on with it. That's the difference between me and you if you haven't done this work. 
where when you haven't done this work, that inner fat bitch stuff, gaining weight, having a weight gain can take you down for days, weeks, months, sometimes years. Okay. And I also know that I'm not planning on getting pregnant ever again. I'm done. So I literally have no reason to ever gain my weight back. None. None. And I feel empowered AF to know that if I want this weight off, it's on me. It's not up to anybody else. And it doesn't matter what happens to me, what circumstances I'm going through, what kind of stress I'm feeling, how sleep deprived I am at the moment. It is 100% up to me what goes in my mouth and how I think about myself. And I know that the weight's going to come off and I'm not pressed and I'm not stressed about it because I know what to do to get it off. And I also know how to think and feel and I have a relationship with myself that isn't contingent upon how much I lit, how much weight I lose or gain. Because I'm still me. My body just looks a little different right now. It's a little more fluffy. It's a little more uh, doughy, <laughs> if you will. Because postpartum... Postpartum body image can be a bitch, a bitch. And I, because it's, it's, it's not like the baby comes out and you just look just like you did before. You're swollen. You may have stretch marks. You may have, you know, you still have a stomach for a while. Like your uterus doesn't even go down for the first six weeks. So you still look pregnant. Um, and then your belly, it's not like I had a tight, tone belly before but it's like super doughy jiggly even more than usual right because I just stretched out to carry this person so it's like I'm saying all of this to say that you know wanting to just get the weight off whether it's because you had a weight gain from eating whether you had a weight gain from having a baby and just wanting that weight off so bad for the sake of getting it off that is not going to be life changing because if you are trying to approach your weight loss from a place of hatred, from a place of disgust, from a place of misery, the weight won't stay off. And that was the difference for me is I kept gaining and losing and gaining and losing. And, you know, after I had my daughter and I lost all my weight, it didn't come back on. And that's the first time in my life that the weight never came back. Why? Because I have done the things that I now teach you guys how to do. How to have a better relationship with myself. How to feed my soul. How to feel confident. How to take in perfect action. How to like shut down the inner fat bitch chatter that goes on in your brain. Because if you don't like where you are, you have to take stock and you have to take inventory and go, okay, how did I get here? What actions did I take to put myself here? And the actions that we take come from the feelings that we have. And the feelings that we have come from the thoughts that we have. And so that's why in the program we do so much work around what are the bullshit stories that you're telling yourself? What are the bullshit rules that you've created? What are the thoughts that you have? Because it's the thoughts that drive the feelings and feelings dictate our actions. And if you look around your life and you don't love what you see, it's a culmination of your actions. So we keep going back and back and back and figuring that out. So, you know, I just, I want you to be aware that if you're sitting there feeling pressed and stressed about 20 pounds that you just have to lose and I'm going to do anything to do it. I'm going to put my head down. I'm going to struggle and I'm going to hustle and I'm going to make myself miserable doing it. And then when I lose the 20 pounds, I'll do this self-love bullshit. If that's your approach, it's broken. If that is your approach, it will never work for you. It just won't. Because the next tragedy, the next stress, the next pandemic, the next shutdown, the next whatever is going to take you down with it because you don't know how to cope with life outside of food because you don't know who you are and you don't have an identity outside of, well, I'm just the fat girl who gains and loses weight and uses food. If you don't have an identity outside of that, you're going to struggle until you fix it. Period. 
And so I end up seeing people for years repeating the cycle, the yo-yo diet, body hate, shame cycle over and over and over and over. Because life, while there's so many beautiful things and so much to be grateful for and so many great moments, life wasn't designed to be perfect 24-7. So you sit there and you try to lose your 20, 30 pounds in a bubble. And when life decides, I'm going to, I'm ready to fuck it up. I'm going to fuck some shit up right now, okay? When life decides to do that because it will, you don't know what to do because you have no other coping skills, because you have no relationship with yourself, because you don't know what else to do besides shove food down your throat so you don't have to think about what's going on. Because if you took the food away, you'd be left with a person you don't really know very well and you don't really like very well, and that's you, boo. That's you. That's you. And, you know, considering I have to hang out with myself 24-7, I kind of want to like who I am. Because that's a lot of time. (laughs) That's a lot of time. And so what people end up doing is if it's not food that you're using to deflect, it's busyness. It's people-pleasing. You have like martyr syndrome where you have to volunteer for everything and then be pissed off because you volunteered. And why do you do that? You're doing that so you don't have to be by yourself. And it's always interesting because when we do confidence clarity calls to see if you are a good fit for the Ears of Will You program, one of the questions that I ask is, you know, if I could wave a magic wand and you could tell me where you want to be a year from now, how would you feel and what would you be doing? And would you believe that everybody, for the most part, not everybody, but a a large amount of the people I talk to, they really struggle with that question. Like they really struggle or they get really emotional because they've never even thought about what's possible. And that's what I'm going to challenge you on as well is I want you to stop thinking about 20 pounds. What the, what the Fudge does tw- I don't even know why I say fudge because I sit here and throw F-bombs all day long. <laughs> what the fudge does 20 pounds have to do with your quality of life? Okay, let's, let's, let's remove the fact that, okay, maybe 20 pounds, 30 pounds, 50 pounds, whatever your number is. Let's, let's also acknowledge that losing physical weight can be life-saving. Losing physical weight can get your numbers down, your blood pressures, your sugars. There can be actual physical bonuses that come with losing the weight. Let's not deny that. But what I'm also talking about is I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when you fantasize and daydream that when you lose 20 pounds, you're going to magically not be shy anymore. You're going to feel empowered. You're going to go after that job. You're going to go put yourself out there and start dating, or you're going to start, you know, Uh, start a family or whatever, right? That's what I'm talking about is you're attaching some bullshit fantasy daydream to what losing 20 pounds is going to do for you. And what I want to challenge everybody to do is instead of going, well, I want to lose 20 pounds so I can be this size and blah, blah, blah. No. What I want you to do is make a list of this is how I want to transform my life. And as I am getting back into active weight loss again for myself postpartum, this is something that I'm doing as well. Because for me, I honestly don't care about, oh, I have to lose 50 pounds because X, Y, and Z. It's like, I want to lose weight because I want to feel lighter. I want to feel... um. I don't want to feel winded when I walk up and down the stairs. I want to be able to run around at the park and feel confident and feel like I can still breathe. I want to be able to cross my legs. I want to be able to, you know, so what I'm saying is like you need to really make a list of how do you want to feel? Not what number, because here's the thing. You could go through a weight loss journey and let's say you lost 50 pounds and you needed to lose 100. And let's say you lost 50 and you're halfway there. 
but you feel amazing and you actually feel pretty comfortable and confident and your numbers are good and your quality of life is good and your mental health is good, would you stop there? Or do you need to keep going just because you created a number? And that's a very personal question. I can't answer that for you. But that's why it's important as you enter into weight loss, you really have to think about how do I want to feel and what kind of life do I want to live? You know, and if one of your things is I want to feel less anxious, okay, then that's some, something you got to get to work on because losing weight isn't going to change your anxiety, right? Um, so, so make that list. Start thinking about what are the things that, and, then, and if you want to go back and listen to the episode right before this, it'll really help you with that as well. But just thinking about how do you want to feel? How do you want to show up? What kind of life do you want to have? And don't put limits on it. Like pretend there are zero limits, zero limitations. What kind of life do you want to have? And that's what it's about. Because just wanting to lose 20 pounds, there's nothing. That's surface level bullshit. That's surface level shit. What do you really want? Or how is carrying the extra weight really affecting you? Because it's not just, oh, I can't fit in my jeans. It might be, I'm embarrassed to be seen naked in front of my spouse. So I have no sex life. That's a problem. And that's a problem that, you know, it doesn't just affect you. Or it might be, I can't stand this extra weight, so I don't want to be seen in public, so I don't take my kids anywhere. So my kids are miserable. Or my kids are tired of hearing mommy always say no. Or my friends always invite me to go out. And I'll go out when I lose the weight, but I keep telling them no. And now my friends never invite me to go anywhere, so I have no friends. That's a problem. That's a problem. All of those are problems. So I want you to really think about these things and think bigger than just weight loss. Just weight loss is selling yourself short. How can you think bigger about the type of life that you want for yourself? That's so much more than losing 20 pounds. All right, guys. This was impromptu. I wasn't planning on it, um, but I am starting to get back in action, back in the groove. It feels good to be here. It feels good to be podcasting and talking with you all. Make sure if you have not, you join the free Facebook group. You can type in Irresistible You Podcast and the group will come up on Facebook. It's also linked below in the show notes. You can also keep up with me and follow behind the scenes at Irresistible Icing on Instagram. And if the podcast is helping you transform your life in any way, I would appreciate if you go over to iTunes and leave a quick rating and review. Thank you so much for listening. Until the next time, stay irresistible. Bye guys.